Hey guys, welcome back to Our Repair Guys. In today's video, guys, we will show you how to remove and replace timing chain on Hyundai Elantra uh, Generation 2011 up. This is this will be the 1.8 engine and you, but the 2.0 I think is the same way as well. So we did quite a bit of this assembly here. Now, first, you do not have to remove the intake. We removed it because we will be removing uh, the cylinder head as well. Quite a few. Uh, the repairs will be done on that engine but in this video we'll show you how to replace the timing chain how to get to it so we'll start from the very beginning we'll work our way all the way to the chain and replacing it we have more than 200 videos taking this whole car apart so if you need anything please guys subscribe also you can find more videos about that car on electrical car repair life please give a subscribe uh, we'll go ahead start on it and if you have any questions drop a comment we'll try to answer them so the first step will be to drain the oil out of the oil pan so that way we don't make a mess when we remove it even though we will drain the oil get the cardboard or something like that because it will keep dripping oil once you remove the oil pan. So 17 mm socket and we will remove the oil plug now. After that we will let it drain for a few minutes and once it's empty we'll come back to it. Okay, we're ready to install the drain plug now. So next we'll need a 10 mm socket and we'll be removing that plastic there otherwise we'll not be able to remove the open. On the side. Okay, and it came out of there. Next you can see that plastic will need to be removed because there is bolts underneath it. So we'll be using the same 10 millimeter, uh, well 12, 12 millimeter now. Okay. We'll remove that, uh, that plate right there that connects to the bell housing. Okay, like that. And you have to be careful not to drop on you towards the end, not to leak oil on you, wear glasses, eye protection. That impact is pretty handy, it saves you so much time. Now 
Now the open is stuck, it has silicone. I don't think it has a gasket, it's just a silicone. So you need to push a little bit more up, don't go down because you bend the oil pan. Okay, let's see if it's going to get loose. Okay. You have some oil we need again. You can see how stuck it is. All the silicone will need to be cleaned as well. So you can see oil pan is out of the way now. Uh, all that will need to be cleaned really good to make sure you don't have any silicone left when you're uh, ready to install the oil pan later. And also you need to clean the top surface of the pan here, not to be greasy at all. And you have to apply the silicone and just put it and install it on the car. So we use that impact here now, uh, half an inch impact pretty powerful. All the tools that we use will be listed in the description of the video below. The compressor, that little pancake compressor goes all the way to 165 PSI. So it will be amazing for that job because it will give us quite a bit of boost in the beginning so we can remove that bolt. Uh, like counterclockwise now to try to get the bolt loose. Okay, and you can see with just a little bit of air, okay, that crankshaft pulley bolt came out. Okay, now you can grab it. It's a keyed, keyed uh, crankshaft pulley. So it goes only one certain way, okay? And we pulled it out just like that. So the next, the, what we're going to do next, we'll remove the intake, okay? You do not have to do that for that work, but we'll be, we'll be removing the cylinder head because we have to do some uh, internal work as well. So we'll remove the intake, but uh, for, that, for that thing, if you see the intake, missing okay that's why it's missing but you do not have to do that you can see the intake is out of the way so we can show you a little bit better how to remove the alternator too that bolt right here will need to be loose on the side right here with the 12 millimeter you have another bolt that you need to get loose and after that you get that bolt loose this is the manual tensioner and the belt will come off we have the video on the channel if you want to see how to remove the belt uh, most of you will know so we didn't uh, we didn't include it in this one, we already did it earlier. And you have to make sure your battery is disconnected before you proceed removing the alternator because otherwise you can catch your car on fire or burn the car computer. Now that 12mm bolt on the side for the tensioner will need to be removed, that way we can remove the alternator. Okay, it came out. Now we need to disconnect the wires. This one you press in and pull it out. Okay, it came loose. Now this is a nut there with 12 millimeter. You need to open the cap and remove the nut. After that we need to disconnect the wire that's holding there and we can pull it out.
So next we'll need to support the engine from the bottom so we can raise it a little bit and disconnect the engine mount that way we can remove the pulley for the water pump and we start removing the side cover. Okay so we have the uh, wood box there so we don't damage anything underneath and we barely supported it and jacked it only, only like half an inch to an inch up that way it will not have any pressure on the mount. 17 millimeters. Okay, we'll remove the bolt next and we will leave the last nut. Okay, now we have to be very careful on the last nut because if it starts dropping, we have to raise it up a little bit. Okay, and we can still raise it just a little bit because it caught in the thread there. Now we will remove these bolts on the water pump pulley with a 10 mm socket. And just a quick tip before we start the work. When you still have the belt on, okay, you can go ahead and break them loose because the belt will prevent the pulley from, uh, from turning. Ours are already loose, so we'll just go ahead and remove them now one by one. Okay, last bolt now, and we can pull the pulley out. Okay, just like that. This ground wire will need to be removed and later installed. Do not forget it, because if you do, your engine might not work. So now we need to remove that bolt with a 14 millimeter. Here, I think this one is just holding the hook, so it might not be, yep, it's not holding there, but it's in the way, so that way we can remove these two bolts, and we'll need to start removing all the bolts now that hold the side timing cover towards the cylinder head and the engine block. So that will be quite a bit of bolts removing now, guys. We'll start from this side and go all the way down, around, and come back. So you can see those are with 12 now. And usually once you break those loose, they go pretty easy. Most of them will go by hand. Okay, right there. Let me show you what they look like now. You can see it just like that. Okay, this one as well. And after that we have one, looks like this one is with a 14 millimeter. You can see this one was pretty tight. We'll have the torque specs for that 
we have a video for that guys probably we'll share the torque specs for the cylinder head for the timing cover we have uh, videos so you feel free to check them out okay it gets stuck so with the socket usually they go pretty easy okay longer bolt here And this timing cover has quite a few bolts, so it's important to remember in which order you took them off so you can install the same bolts at the same place. And while removing the bolts, to explain that silicone later will need to be cleaned and new silicone will need to be applied here and here once everything's put together. That way the valve cover will seal really good. Now we have the 14 millimeter there. And we don't even need to remove, uh, you can see we don't even need to remove the water pump for that. We can reach all the bolts that way. So we will have the whole car taken apart on the channel. Again, if you need anything, drop a comment. We'll try to, to make a video, guys. It might not be the same day, but we'll try to make one for you. Okay, now we have one right there, next to the water pump. Okay, this one came out. Now we have uh, one more down there, we got loose. Some of them do not go so easy. I think there is some silicone in the thread too. Just trying to think what it is, but that side cover attaches to the cylinder head and the engine broke by silicone. There is no gasket, so I assume silicone can get in one of the bolts and it will not come off so easy. Now we have a 10 millimeter right there in the middle. Okay, this is the 10 millimeter there. Now on the bottom, I already got those loose, not to waste your time. Okay, you can see this one here. Uh, okay, this one needs a little bit more. Okay, so let's pull it out. Now this one is loose. Four more here. One towards the back. Okay, one more came out, I'll try to shoot from here now so you can see a little bit better. And we just have a few more now. And we have one more hidden I think. So it's always important to check, make sure that you do not have any bolts because if you do and you try to pry it out, you're going to crack. So it's quite a bit of work, but it's doable by yourself. You can save yourself quite a bit of money. You have to make sure that you get everything right. Double, triple check everything when you put it together. So now this is 14 millimeters again. We have two big ones. And after that, this one is with 14 millimeter, and there is one more down there with 12. Okay, this one is coming off now. All the tools, guys, that we use will be listed in the description of the video below, so feel free to check it out. Okay, this one just came loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if it's going to come off or... Okay, we'll remove that in the way because we cannot remove the bolt and we don't want to <laughs> move the engine too much because it's on the jack. There is a jack stand underneath, always always use a jack stand. Okay. 
perfect. We have to remember that this one is there. Now pull the bolt out. Okay, this one here, I think it's a 14 as well. That we'll need to remove in a little bit. Okay, now this one right here, looks like it's 14 probably, it could be 12, I don't know for sure, yep, it's a 14, so extension will be needed for this one or a deep socket. And hopefully that's all of them, we'll check and make sure that we don't have anything else. All the silicone is pretty, pretty tight. All the bolts are out of there as you can see. So it almost, as you can see, it's almost loose still. Holding a little bit here and there, there is a few, a few glides, so we need to make sure that it can come out. Okay, now we need to see how we're going to pull it up or down. So eventually it comes out, okay, nothing else holding there. So after we remove the timing cover, now this is the timing chain guys, we got to it. Uh, you need to bring the engine to TDC point, okay. TDC point is when cylinder number one is in the uh, uh, it, it cannot go more up. It's the position that it's about to start going down between going up and down So that's top dead center uh, We have a detailed video how to find it if you need help But at TDC those pockets will be pointing towards, e towards each other So this is the tensioner. Okay right there 10 millimeter socket two bolts. It's spring loaded. So be careful. It will kick out We'll remove the top one first that way the tensioner will turn counterclockwise because it, as I said, it's spring loaded. You will see in a second. Okay, you can see, and our timing just got off. But that's fine, we'll be putting a new chain anyways. We we'll recommend using a new tensioner, new chain, and in some cases, you can even put new uh, timing chain guides. I would recommend going the uh, whole way. In our case, we'll put new tensioner and new chain only. So now we can push that tensioner towards the back and pull the chain out of there. And that glide, I mean, my bad. So this is the new chain and tensioner that we just received. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install it, show you about the chain. And the tensioner has that spring loaded thing that you should never pull out until you install it. And this is the chain. So on your chain you're going to notice three links that are covered. Okay, you can see they're goldish covered. Those links will need to be installed in specific order now and we'll show you how. You can see those dots, you need to match two, right here one dot, here one here and one on the crankshaft. So on the new timing chain you have two teeth that are covered that are closer to each other, the, one or the other one is towards the bottom. Now the engine is a TDC, top dead center, remember, so a to top dead center right now, okay, and you can see the camshafts are actually a little bit off and that's fine, we'll show you how the timing needs to be done according to the manual. You can see the crankshaft on the bottom is a TDC, that flat spot, it's even with the plane here. Okay, that flat spot right there. But uh, you have to make sure that it's TDC because there is two flat spots on it. Now, the right 
two that's marked we're going to put it on that dot right here then we will leave the chain like that I'll go on the bottom okay you need to go in the glide there I'll go on the bottom okay install it here but now it's past that dot you can see so we have to turn the engine 2 to 3 teeth that's what the manual says until you do not have any slack on the chain and the tube is exactly right there okay let me see now okay you can see just like that this is the cover tube here one person will pull it over the top okay now right here I'm gonna hold it up and one person turns the camshaft clockwise okay until it comes here it needs to go in the teeth now don't let go yet you need to pull that glide and hold it with your hand tight until you install the tensioner okay so this is the new tensioner now it has two bolts so we need to go ahead and install it we have the torque specs guys in a different video we will explain all the torque specs and things like that for the car so Okay, this bolt is almost done. One more. Okay, this one here now. After that, we get those tight with 10 millimeter socket. Okay, like that. Now, we have to pull that spring right here and it will kick the tensioner out. Okay, you can see like that. Now, we will need to turn the engine two revolutions on the crankshaft, clockwise of course, and at two revolutions at top dead center, those things need to be matching. Okay, so let's see if that's going to happen. So, on the bottom, I'll be using a 22 on the crankshaft bolt. Okay, so we can turn the engine two revolutions now. Okay, and when you have oil in the system later, it's going to put more pressure on the timing chain tensioner so you will not have any chain slack. Okay. so let's see if it's coming now almost okay you can see the first mark is almost there oh I just passed it a little bit so what I'm going to do I'll have to go and do two more revolutions because I went too much so we did two more revolutions, so either do two or four, it, has, it needs to be an even number. And now it's a top dead center, you can see and our marks are perfectly matching here there with the plane of the cylinder head. Uh, the cover teeth will not be here anymore because once you do one revolution they come off and they will never match anymore. Okay, so the bottom one is a top dead center again. We have the video if you want to see how we bring it to that center. So from that point on, you have to put everything together in reverse order that we took apart. Uh, if you need help with anything, let us know. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you next time.